welcome back to the Lear and Blair slog. Thanks to everybody who watched our last video of Man Man Parrow searching for her long lost mother, Nida Ruby. There was such an overwhelming response to that video. It's still climbing and we're hitting nearly 200,000 views. Thank you to everyone who commented and shared. And we didn't expect that we would find her father as well. The video that you're about to watch is of a young lady called JD. She reached out to the Lear and Blair slog asking for our help to find her biological parents. She was adopted at a very early age after being abandoned in a hospital in Manila in 1984. In her own words, this is her story of abandonment, adoption and hope that one day through the Lear and Blair slog and yourselves watching, we may be able to find her birth mother and father. JD is looking for her Filipino birth parents. Go see JD. I'm an adoptee born in the Philippines and raised in the US. I was born in the hospital and two days later, my mother left me in the hospital and I was subsequently sent to an orphanage, Kirk's receiving home in Zambalok. And I was taken care of in the orphanage uh, for a couple months and then I was um, adopted by a, a military family, uh, an American father and a Filipina wife. And I grew up in the United States after we left the Philippines. And I, I was really young when I was adopted, so I personally don't have any direct memories that I have of my adoption or of those days. I was, I was fortunate to have Filipino influences all through my life. I had a Filipino mother and she had extensive family still in the Philippines and she had brought her nanai to the U.S. to help raise her son and myself um, while she was working. So I got to have a Lola who spoke only in Tagalog and um, one of my favorite pastimes was when my Lola would be cooking in the kitchen and my mother would be there and they would really do the real cuento cuento, the chisme uh, about olden days of how a family used to do things and where are they at now and I remember thinking that that was a huge part of what I wanted to experience and that made me want to go back to the Philippines. I've had that opportunity to go back several times when I was younger and experience the Philippines, the joys, the, the beaches, and the fun of it. So yeah, very wonderful memories of going back to the Philippines. I felt ostracized a lot from my small family structure and it was very apparent. I was in a very abusive environment a lot of physical violence, a lot of emotional restriction. Two emotions that I understood very well was anger and sadness. And a lot of times I was held apart um, from, the, from the unit. I didn't always eat with the family when I was younger. Um, and there was just daily things that were said that made me understand that I had a very outsider viewpoint and I was too young to really understand and this led to me having to achieve or try to earn my way into this family. Although I wasn't told of my adoption, and I think that this led to a very confused childhood of just under, not understanding why. Why? What did I do? Or what did I not do to be able to be included? Um, 
this led to a survival mentality of, well, you have to operate like this and you have to um, control, limit, restrict your emotions. And this was debilitating up until I was a teenager where I realized this wasn't normal and, and healthy. At the age of 19, I found out that I was adopted, uh, primarily because I needed to look at some documentation, and I was told that this may not have ever been told to me um, if it was their choice, but I was going to look at the documentation and it would have revealed that I was adopted. This had an everlasting effect on me and it, it helped me to really change my perspective and, and thinking uh, from my childhood. So it changed from a viewpoint of why me? Why was I experiencing and going through all of those hardships and why was I singled out and isolated and, and, and left out? This one word, adoption, became the answer to everything. Uh, why was I not part of the family unit? Why was I not part of the family structure? Um, why me? I mean, just that one word, adopted. It, in a sense, gave me a lot of healing because... It answered that I am not one of them. And while I might not agree with the sentiments that I don't belong to that structure, it was, it, it became reality for me that I was the outsider. And it gave me a, such a set of relief. Um... I think I did have questions about my birth family uh, to a degree, but never did I really think that that their letting me go, relinquishing me was more of an issue that I needed an answer to versus the experience that I had for my adoption family. Hearing the different stories of my birth family, and a lot of them may not have had uh, any depth to them, any maybe um, truths that I could actually track down. After I was told of my adoption, it was kind of swept under the rug and never really talked about again, and it was pretty hush-hush. Uh, amongst the family. Nobody talked to me about it. It was like, wow, I learned something so important about my beginning of my life and something that I think is important that answers a lot of questions, you know, to, to my adoptive family issues, but nobody still would talk about it. It, it just disappeared all of a sudden. And I always wondered why, when I brought it up, how come it still was taboo to talk about? I often say I am a proud Filipina. Although I grew up in U.S. America, and I, when I travel abroad, people will ask, where did you grow up? I will say, yes, I, I grew up in the U.S., but I always identify first being born as a strong Filipina. An abandoned one and a half month baby girl named Baby Girl Enrile Soriano was admitted at Cribs Receiving Home for proper care and case management on October the 30th, 1984. The baby had been in the hospital nursery of the hospital Nung Manila since the mother left, against doctor's advice, two days after giving birth and since then had never been heard of. According to the hospital's information, the mother was called Joan Enrilli or Joanne Enrilli and the father was Rostrum Soriano. The mother's name again was Joanne 
and really Soriano. Hi, my name is JD, the co-founder of Adapti Cuento Cuento, and I get to build community with Filipino adoptees from all over the globe. I get to hear their stories on what it's like to be an adoptee living in other cultures, but together we get to build community. I'm actually here today to hopefully find more about my biological family. I have very limited information, but I'm hoping with the help of Leah and Blair, I get to have connection or just learn more about what it's like for my biological family. My birth mother's name is Joanne Enrile Soriano, and my biological father's name is Rostrum Soriano. I think they're from Pasay or perhaps Malate, but that's only the limited information that I know. I was born in 1984 from the Hospital Nang Manila. Then I was adopted out to an American family. They were in the U.S. Navy, stationed in the Longapo, and then moved over to the U.S. And I got to grow up in the U.S. I don't know very much other than that for my adoption, but I'm hoping with your help, with also Leah and Blair, that I get to add more to my story and possibly reunification. For a lot of adoptees, we don't get to have that story, but I'm hoping today, reaching out, that I can actually have a reunification story or at least learn more about not only the Philippines, but this community that's always searching and hoping for more. Thank you, Leah, Blair, for all the work that you guys do, and I'm hoping that I can have also an amazing ending to my story. 